Okay, looks like it's recording. <laughs> um, hello to everyone out there who um, just enjoys the melding of the worlds of Minecraft and education and being able to use those two things uh, in com combination to, um, to teach and stuff like that. So anyway, um, in my last video, I um, sort of talked about using world edit with um, Minecraft and, and Minecraft EDU to make some really cool maps and things that um, you might find difficult to do otherwise. And so, let me see, make sure I got volume turned down here. Actually, I'm using earphones, so it doesn't matter. I just don't want any feedback. Um, but yeah, it should be fine. Anyway, um, yeah, so I was talking about using World Edit to make things that, you know, would otherwise be very difficult to do uh, in Minecraft. So um, I just want to show you sort of a little update of what I've been doing. Um, I'm still using 1.1, 1 .1, um, just because sort of the mods that I'm using, they haven't really all together been updated. You can see the Voxel mod pack's been updated uh, to 1.2.3, however, 1.2.4 just came out, so, so much for that idea. Um, so yeah, we're going to be using 1.1, 1 .1 and we're going to go into the world here, same world as before, and just make it daytime. You can see I've been doing some more experimenting with World Edit. Um, I've never made a Greek-style Parthenon temple before, so I decided to give that a shot. It's one of the first big things I've really ever built. Um, and so you can see it's got the nice, how do you say it, coffered, coffered, coffered ceiling and some cool stuff. This wouldn't necessarily be educational. I just happened to spawn right there, so just sort of showing you what I've got. But, you know, it's it's cool. Um, I'm going to just change texture packs real quick to something that looks a little bit less crazy. Um, I love Isabella texture pack. It's just it's so nice. Anyway, um, I might even actually put a link in the description to this texture pack. We'll see what happens. If you look in the description and you find that there's no link to this, then I decided not to put it. Um, but I probably did because I love the texture pack so much. I just want to give the maker some free publicity. Um, just also a side note, I mean, like I said, I want this video to go kind of quickly, just because the other one took a little longer to upload, and I had to split it into two parts, um, but I'm probably going to make a few digressions along the way, just talking about some things I discovered with World Edit, and I'm sure other people have done them before I have. I'm, I'm pretty new to the game in terms of World Edit, but um, just a couple of cool things. This structure here was made by pouring... Um, or rather by making a giant sphere of water, letting it drip down, and then taking all that water and converting it to stone, and then hollowing it out and making it look all cool. So, oops, um, let me turn up the brightness on my thing so I can see. It probably has no, there's no difference in the actual recording, but, ah, okay. Um, anyway, so yeah, so this is what I made with it. Um, and so, yeah, just an idea of something you can do with... With that, you can make those sorts of cylinders really easily. Um, before, with the um, with these guys, let me just jump over to here. So this with this mitochondrion um, that I showed you in the last video, what I did was make a sphere and then chop it in half and then stretch it over and then you know ch give the other half, flip it around and make this the other half. And that was kind of a long process compared to to that big structure over there where I just spawned some water and let it drip down and then. Um, converted that. So, just kind of a cool little process thing that might inspire someone. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, this is all probably looking slightly familiar if you saw the last video. Um, this is a little mechanism that I came up with that I'm going to talk more about later. So, just sort of, you know, keep that in the back of your mind. Um, we're going to go over across this little watery area here to show you the project that I've been working on. Um, my spring, my college spring break was last week or a couple weeks ago, and so I had a lot of time to work on this, but now as things are sort of back into the swing of things, and I haven't had a lot more time, but it's coming along slowly. Um, so I don't know what you, if you can tell what this is yet, but basically... It's a human body adventure map, or at least the prototype for a human body adventure map. So we got to make it real dramatic. 
So there, rain and <laughs> and and darkness, and it's cool. So that, imagine that. Let's go through this. Imagine that the students spawn here, and that there would be a nice sort of um, thing around this whole platform, so that um, you wouldn't see all this junk here. But you'd still see this kind of face guy here. This is a guy. It's a face. And I made a little platform to put some no-build blocks um, or some spawn blocks. If if you had those in your teacher mod, um, you can put them right under these stone slabs. So the adventure begins, right? The students, basically their job is going to be to help that guy. Haven't given him a name yet. Um, thinking about giving him a cool name the students will like, but nothing I can think of sounds that cool. Maybe a pun. Some sort of pun involving the human body. Because um, that's what this is. It's a human body adventure map. Um, so, uh, Or at least it's the beginning of one. So... Um, not completely finished, but I think the ideas are pretty cool, so I thought I'd share them with you guys. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it sunny because this rain is is causing a little bit of lag, so that's fine. Um, so this is the bridge, right? Standard standard bridge. Um, excuse me. So we can um, walk up to the bridge into the mouth. Yeah. Da 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 da. Welcome to the mouth. Feel free to look around. When you're ready, jump down into the trachea. Haha, -ha, very cool. That's the uvula. We got all these things labeled. You can see there's a molar. There's some incisors. Yeah, it's, it's the teeth. Um, and that's the tongue that we're standing on. And I tried to make it so that it works well with both my texture pack plus the default. Um, right? It's basically all wool except for the teeth is, is snow. The teeth are snow. And so it, it, it kind of works with whatever. Um... Because I know there are some adventure maps that really only work, or work better than with certain texture packs and others, but I've been trying to make it so that it kind of works well with a lot of them. Yeah, this is my Forgotten Lands one, which is also one of my favorites. Um, and it seems to work well with this, too. So, you know, um, the tongue. Um, yeah, that's, so the texture pack won't really be an issue in, in this thing, hopefully, unless you got kind of a weird one going on. I have here um, Doku Craft for 1.9, which came with another adventure map I was doing, which um, I actually don't have Patcher installed, so it looks a little weird. It, you can see it's a HD texture, and some of the things just look weird, but I mean, it, it works, right? It works really well. Um, so, going back, uh, we can go to Isabella, and we can head down the trachea. I can make it daytime just so we can see a little better. The trachea, and everything's, or I tried to label a lot of the things, and a lot of the anatomy here, I've basically, the sources I've used have been sort of um, my high school biology class of, of what I can remember from it, plus, um, I'll be honest, I've wikipedia a few things. Uh, I know they say, you know, Wikipedia isn't the best source. It's just true, it's not. But I mean, I figure, you know, how bad can it really be? Um, so if I've made any horrible, horrible mistakes that are completely, that completely don't make any sense, please let me know in the comments. Um, I've tried to keep it, like, balanced between realistic and doable and also Minecrafty, so that it's not, like, super realistic, while at the same time it's not, you know, just a single, like, tube that you go down. Like, it's, you can see the things here and there. This is what I thought I might put an esophagus back here, you know, behind the um, behind the trachea, as is as is what's supposed to be. But then I thought, you know, it it might be better to get to this to the to the digestive system a different way, and I'm not sure. I might go through through the, through the brain or the not the brain, but the um, up into the brain and then down through back through the blood system, the bloodstream, the the um, circulatory system, excuse me, um, and maybe get to, the, get to the, the stomach that way. I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. But, like I said, it's not, it's not completely done. Um, here's the, I mean, you know, this is sort of, you can see all, that, all, that, all those things that I've built there. That's kind of how it looks. So we can just, we'll get started, you know. Why well, keep talking when we can get started? These yellow things are, the, are those um, cartilage rings in your throat, right? This cartilaginous tracheal rings. Most people have around 15 or so. I believe this one has about 10. 
just because if it were more, it would just go down too far. But here we go. So the kids are going to go in here. They're going to jump down. Oops, they're going to jump down. And they pass through water, which decelerates them. So that basically, if I were back up here, if I were back up here, and I had survival mode on, then I could jump down here, and I wouldn't get hurt that much. You see, I took two hearts of damage. Um, so it's not that bad. So... And this is basically built for survival and creative. Um, so it could be, you know, whatever. If the kids are locked into survival mode, I don't know how the, how the mod works for the ed educational mod, but, you know, it, either way, it would be fine. So we're here at the at sort of the, the bronchial tube, and um, we got the right lung here and the left lung here. It doesn't matter which lung they choose. And actually, I should have I checked to make sure this was ready because it's actually not not quite not quite ready yet, but um, I just got to do one little thing to make this um, to make this ready. I think this is fine. So fill water thirty. Is that what I want? Yeah, that's what I want. So the idea is that this guy, whoever we're inside of right now, is sort of he's sick, he's ill, right? And we're going into the body, and we're sort of exploring the body as well as doing things to help him out in terms of like curing him a little bit. So um, when you go into the bronchial tube and into, into the lungs, the kids can split up into two groups. One can go into the left lung, one can go into the right lung. They're basically flopped mirror images of each other. And so the idea is that they come down here and like I said, it's water. So basically if they were to jump down here, um, they would just fall into the water and they'd be okay. Right, and they'd swim up and climb up this ladder and into, and you know, grab into this chest, and you'd see a whole bunch of buckets. There should actually be a bucket there. Um, but, yeah. Um, so they'd see a whole bunch of buckets, and they can pretty much infer that they have to drain all the liquid. So, um, what, oops, what's cool about this is the way this works. Um, one person draining all this liquid, um, w it would take forever. But I, I'm sort of guessing that a, a group of people, multiplayer, you know, two people, four people, or even a whole class of maybe 12 to 24 people, they would take, you know, they would get this done in like a few minutes, maybe even less, maybe even like a, one minute or, or so. Um, but basically, here's how it works. And I'm, very, I'm actually really proud of how, how I made this because um, it involves a lot of redstone that I was sort of unfamiliar with before, and um, it's cool stuff. So basically, um, there's a door right here. We can't see it because it's closed. And the only way to pass through it is to drain both lungs of all the water. So um, I have installed right now a, um, a macro that allows me to right-click a bunch of times per second. So I can, you know, just sort of go in here and, and you go like that and it drains all that water. Um, just so, I'll do it, I mean, I'm, I'm going to do it like that so that, you know, we're not wasting time draining all this whole thing. Um, but the way it would work if I was in survival mode and not creative mode, so change game modes, when I grab water, it fills up the bucket, so I need a place to put this water. So I designed this, which is basically a water destroyer. Um... That's the back of a piston there, which is basically the piston of a bud switch, which is then hooked up to another piston, which does this. So if you didn't catch what happened, um, pretty much, um, oops, pretty much, um, it looks like actually it's, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, but basically what's, what's happening is as I, as I put the water in here, it updates the bud switch and causes a piston to push this big block on top here down and just get rid of the source water block. So it's a water disposal, fluid disposal area, and this is the same in the other lung. So the kids can, you know, come along here, grab their water, bring it here. You know, they might need to come over here a little bit and grab some water and come up here and and do that. So it gives them a cool adventure-y thing to do. It's like a puzzle. And so I'm just going to go here and switch game modes and fly in and, and oops, ah, wrong button. 
and just sort of pull out all this water. And the cool thing is, since we did it in World Edit, the only source blocks are on the top. So they don't have to like grab like each block of water, they just need to grab the top layer of water um, to get it to all drain out. Just got to make sure that you get the ones under these blocks here. Um, and you can sort of tell where it's coming from because the, so the source blocks will be either the stagnant ones or the ones with, that are just sort of highest off the ground. So, let's see. Um, this one, maybe this one here. There we go. And now you can see it's all draining away. And what's cool is that when it drains, the lights sort of get brighter. So we have sort of a, oh, it's nice and bright in here now, and it's we're cured. So you can see the water is actually always flowing down out of here, which I'll show you this a bit later. It controls the door opening. You can see the door hasn't opened yet. Well, that's because we have to drain water from both lungs to get it to open. It's sort of like an AND gate, like a water AND gate, um, which actually I think is really cool. Um, so we're going to do this one really quick here. Sorry if this is getting a little bit laggy. Um, I'm moving a bit fast, and there's water going on, and I don't know. Um, I don't think, oh, I have Firefox open. I might want to close that in a second just so that um, I can free up some RAM for this. Uh, there we go. So now, if you give it a second, you'll see, oh, I'm getting a lot of lag here. You'll see, after a second and that water flows out, keep waiting. I hope this works. Should work, unless I messed up somehow. Did I mess up somehow? Yeah, I think I messed up somehow. Um, I think th that what it is is the mechanism that I built includes a boat, and the boat ballsed up. Excuse me for saying ballsed up. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, it messed up is what I meant to say. <laughs> um, so actually, I'm just going to go and fix it. And which is good, because it'll actually give me an opportunity to show you how everything works. Um, so I'm just going to do slash slash descend and I descend to the level let me just close out Firefox and that should close alright back to Minecraft so let's see what happened here yeah my boat is gone that's what it is and I don't know why that happened it might have been I might have accidentally cleared all entities from the world once which probably is what happened um, but don't worry this won't happen in the final version um, and if it does, then this video teaches you how to fix it. So, here's what you do. You basically put a boat there. Oops. And that's basically what you do. <laughs> that's how you fix it. So let me explain to you how this works. Um, a lot of you can probably sort of guess already how it's working just by looking at it, but it's, if not, it's okay. It took me a while to figure this out. And I was looking for a long time to figure out a really cool mechanism that I could create that could sort of toggle on and off when water was was poured into something. And I finally found a video um, of uh, the old style bud switch that um, Etho from Etho's lab had sort of done a little showcase on a long time ago. And this was sort of part of it. And so I decided to just grab this little section of it um, and use it use this part of that switch, which this isn't a bud switch, this is just a, a switch, um, but use that in my whole mechanism. So basically, if you, are, if you have water coming out of one of these two things, these both lead out from the lungs, the bottom of the lungs, um, so in that way you can see it's an AND gate, right? Because if water is coming from here, it'll come down that hole and into that thing and activate the switch, but if water is coming from here, it'll do the same thing, so they both have to be clear, but for now, we can just put both of them. So what's happening? Let's give this a look, right? The water's coming in, and it's pushing the boat. The boat's graphic is, is kind of spazzing out. Um, as you can see, it went through that thing there. But in reality, the boat is still registering as being on there. So even though it looks as if the boat flew off into no man's land, that's actually not what's happening. You can see, yeah, see how it just sprung back right there? So it's, it's a graphical error. It's not a position thing. If I attempt to, to jump down here, you can see I, I can't. There's a boat in the way. 
See that? It, it's like spazzing out a bit. That's because there's actually still a, a boat there, technically. So don't worry if it looks like it's going like out into the distance. It comes back, and it's really there. So the water's pouring in. It's causing the boat to float up and deactivate these pressure plates, which is then the si you know going into this redstone down here, and the signal is inverted and comes up here to push in these pistons, which is the door to the pulmonary system, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, and then when the water is removed, the boat lands on the pressure plates, and the same thing happens. The signal is inverted, and the pistons pull back, allowing you to go in. So, we can actually head in there now. Um, so basically when, yeah, when the water gets drained, I can actually show you if you want. There goes the water. There's the door. You can see it's open. In a second, it's going to close. Yep. And then opens again. Ta-da! So in that way, um, this is a basically now a, a little mini-game where you drain the lungs and the door opens. So that's really cool.